Yeah, so uh, basically the chapter, I, I think it's uh, uh, about uh, numeric numbers and uh, at sort of about at the background of the, the, at the backbone of data science and you will have already used them uh, a bunch of times either earlier in this book. Now it's time to systematically survey what you can do with, uh, with them in R, ensuring that you, you are well suited to tackle any future problem involving numeric vectors. So it, 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 it starts with uh, looking at the function, the count function and how it works with numeric uh, vectors. And then it looks at the, uh, the, the, the mutate. It's like uh, mutate is one of, our, <laughs> one of our friends, you know, it's, it's always coming up. <laughs> yeah, and then it uh, uh, including a more general transformation that can be applied to other vectors but are often used with uh, numeric vectors. And then it finishes the chapter by looking at the uh, summarized function. So um, some of the packages, we still need the tidyverse. Even though it mentioned that most of what we will use, uh, it's already in base R, but we still, we still need to load the tidyverse because we are going to use mutate and. So uh, making numbers, uh, in in, uh, in most uh, cases, you will uh, you will get uh, numbers already recorded in R's numeric type, either like a, an integer or a double. In some cases, however, you will encounter like when numbers are written in the case of a string. To uh, undo some of those things, we could use the uh, read R package provides two useful function for uh, passing strings uh, into numbers, like uh, the pass double and the, the pass number. We use the pass double when we uh, like have number that have, have been written as a, as a string like this. So we, when we use the pass double, it just automatically changes to um, actual numbers. And uh, the pass number when uh, the string contains, uh, when the string contains non-numeric uh, text uh, that you want to ignore, uh, like in this particular case, it's having the dollar sign, the US, the USD. So if you want to yeah, ignore all that, we'll just say pass number and it, it will print only the, the, the number. Yeah, I really like this pass number. Um, I use it a lot sometimes because ah. sometimes, yeah, you need to extract a number from different text. So pass number, I find it useful when dealing with text and you want to extract only the numbers, yeah. So it, it, it makes uh, life uh, very easy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so is it, is it that this uh, pass number function could be used even when the data is not tidy stuff? Yeah, yeah, so the thing is, um, I mean, even the pass number, I think it's using rejects at the back end. It's just like a helper function that allows you to extract some stuff. So yeah, so and the regist is used for on tidy stuff. So yeah, you can use it. Yeah. Yeah, and so, I think it's it's to get rid of a lot of steps. Um, yeah, exactly. Cleaning cleaning step because if you have like some columns that really uh, like messy, and you yeah. want just extract some, um, you don't want just to to play with mutate, for example and extract some stuff from it and do some regular expression on top of it. Uh, you just want the number from it, so you, know, you can use this one. Yeah, then this, it comes uh, very handy, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, then it moves to counts. Uh, it, uh, it's like surprising how much data science can do, you, like you can do with only count and a little bit uh, basic uh, arithmetic. So uh, deep layer strives to, strives to make uh, counting as easy as possible with a uh, count. Uh, this function is great for quick exploration and uh, checks during analysis. So this is just an example of the, like from the flight data, we have the, the count uh, like dest, like the destination. It counts the, the various destinations. So he's uh, saying something about uh, the the the, the work, workflow design. You know, in chapter five, we mentioned that uh, it's better to the count to be in a separate line, something like this. But uh, in this case, it's not a big deal if 
we just put all in one one line. So if you also want to see the most uh, common values, we could sort, we could set sort equals to three, like the 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 like the the the, the destinations with the highest um, frequencies. We could just say sort equals three, and then we'll see. Yeah, descending order, I think. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we can still, we have seen this view uh, previously. Or the print n is equals to like infinity. If you want to see like all the values, but I don't think we'll need to, we want to visualize all the values. Just seeing like the the the, the head like the first uh, five or ten observations is you know yeah yeah we could like use it in like uh, getting like just top five or top ten yeah uh, in analysis yeah so there is no need for like printing the whole thing seeing all the values I think that would even be very messy yeah uh, if uh, especially if you have like a lot of types like this one, they have lo a lot of categorical variables or something like that. So, yeah, yeah. So, we can perform the same uh, competition by hand using the group by and uh, summarize and the like the n function. So, he's arguing that you know it's. We could have uh, like done this, use count and get uh, the results we want to see. But uh, using the group by and the summarize functions makes it uh, much more like the the results becomes much more useful, and we could compute uh, like uh, other interesting. Uh, like uh, okay, so he said here that you can compute other summaries, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you use count, you can also compute other summaries um, in in the pipeline itself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it it could be both ways, but I think it's yeah, it's uh, it's more like intuitive to use count than summaries summarize. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if it depends on your the use case itself. So. Yeah. It, it mentions this uh, this uh, n uh, function is a special summary function that the, doesn't take any argument and instead uh, accesses uh, information about the current group. It, it all, only works inside uh, the the deep layer. Yeah, well. I don't know whether anybody, whether any of you, any of you has used this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use it uh, in previous chapters when I was presenting, and um, yeah. just like doing what counts, doing it's just uh, like counting uh, the categorical and give you the idea, like the like the output that you that you see here, uh, like the n. It's the same as the count one. Yeah, it's but... just the same as the count, but it doesn't take like any arguments at all. Yeah, it doesn't take any arguments, but again, it's not intuitive that like our count because count you know that's counting, but n, okay, so you you have to know what n doing. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So it it also it, uh, it looks at the n distinct uh, x counts and the number of distinct unique values. Or of one or more variables. For for example, we could uh, figure out which destinations are served by most carriers, like the the, the distinct uh, um, function. So we could see that uh, most of the carriers served uh, like uh, um, seven different destinations. So it's, it's I think it's in, in, we could use um, unique function with count to do the same thing, I think. 
um sorry yeah i think we could like use count and unique function uh to do the same thing that in in this distinct distinct okay. uh, doing right yeah so previously i was using that is one only called distinct not n distinct i don't know whether n distinct because they have distinct function yeah uh, so we have called distinct distinct uh i don't know what happened with that or is distinct what what is doing exactly is it uh, like um, um getting the yeah. unique values also yes keep only unique distinct rows oh so distinct is keeping rows distinct so if you have like multiple rows um it keep distinct ones look at it i share it so i don't know what this i mean count the number of this unique value oh unique values is yeah. it uh, so here it gives us the the like the it, it gives it in a form in the in the row you know mm -hmm. but how like how it's unique and it's counting um it's counted do you see what I mean? Like, um, so carry is equal not in the sink. Yeah. So basically, we yeah, the carries one is the one that we are counting with in the sink. Yeah. So okay. if I if I get it, it's like trying to say like let let's assume that this force A it's like a. Uh, one city, maybe Atlanta or something like this. So it's trying to count how many unique carriers usually fly to Atlanta. Like if I if I get it, how how many uh, how how many like what flights? Carriers, like carriers, like carriers are like maybe we could assume that they are like uh, uh, let's say flight. Uh, companies or something like this oh yeah but uh, the thing is in like the distinct part is it makes like how we count the unique how how it's count the unique because it's unique you can't count it it's like or is it like how how it be repeatable is unique in, is unique in itself you knew you you see what i mean like yeah, yeah, yeah. I see your, I see your if point. If it's repeated, how it's unique? Yeah, it could be that it just uh, any occurrence. If it uh, uh, occurs one, then it uh, sort of it it doesn't repeat counting it again. Something like this. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Yeah, we should we should we have to just make our search about this one because it's. Um, like it could be useful, but uh, it's not intuitive as I I see it. Yeah. Yeah. So I I guess we could uh, continue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, a weighted count is a uh, is a sum for. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So sorry, sorry to interrupt. To interrupt. I I just uh, get the the documentation, so I will share it here. I think it's it it means that the unique combination, mm -hmm. not just the unique values. It's a unique combination between two values or unique combination of multiple values. Yeah. So it counts the number of unique distinct combination in a set of one or more vectors. Yeah. So it I, I think he he didn't mention that it's it's counting the combination, right? In the book. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I think basically that, that was what I was just saying. It, it like you know, if it uh, just the, the the number of times it it occurs, it doesn't double count it again. You know. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Basically, it doesn't. So it was just telling us the number of flights that uh, the carriers that move to this particular destination. Okay. Yes, I get yeah. it. Also. So it yeah. just counting the number of times a particular item, for example, number um, distinct. For example, if we have one, one, two, two, then it will be two because yes. we have one. We yeah. Have, okay. I get yeah. it. I yeah. don't know about this one. It's very easy. It's very useful. It will be very useful. Yeah, this will be very useful. Yeah. Andy. Okay. Thank you. And then the, the, the uh, weighted count is a sum. For example, you could uh, count the number of uh, miles each uh, each plane flew. You could just say uh, the group by summarize um, the the sum. Our common problems. Uh, yeah, weighted counts are common problems. Uh, <laughs> So count has uh, the the WT, which is the, the weighted argument, or that's the, that does the same, like the same thing. So basically, in a sense, it's like uh, I mean, these two chunk of codes uh, basically do the same thing. You can count uh, missing values by using the, the sum and the is any, which I also found quite interesting, you know. Yeah, this is very useful, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, 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 it might save you a lot of time, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, now it uh, the, this, the look at, looks at uh, numeric transformations. Like uh, it, it talks about this fun transformation functions working well with uh, mutate because of the like the their output is the same length uh, as the, the the input. But but it's like. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, it also stressing the point that you know, this R also have some interesting uh, uh, functions, so it could be very helpful. So it gives an example of this arithmetic and cycling rules, uh, like how it works. Uh, um, R handle mismatched lens by recycling or repeating the shutter vector. Uh, we can see this in operations more easily if we create some vectors outside of a data frame. Like, like here we have, this is X. Um, like uh, X is like, uh, has like uh, four different uh, values, like yeah. divided by five. Um, so, yeah, so what, what what uh, R does it uh, recycle it re recycles it so it it uh, one div one divided by five two divided by five like it divides everything by five something like this yeah it's it's like uh, numpy broadcasting uh, in Python uh, yeah something like that so it's the same yeah yeah. Yeah, so it sometimes it will give you a warning. Um, like here, it's fine. Um, it, it doesn't give you any warning, but we could see here when we want to multiply x by uh, by this, it gives us a warning that saying that you know the warning in uh, x times this uh, um, vector longer object's length is uh, not uh, a multiple of the shorter object. So, it, yeah, still the, it still does the comp, uh, the competition, but it gives you a warning, sort of. Yeah, 
because it's not it's not like uh, a matrix like in numpy or python we have like a matrix like just representing a matrix in memory and we do some calculation on it and that's why it's very fast uh because it's just matrix um we're representing matrix in memory but here it's like it's not like it's not that, that like that's that structure so yeah yeah so what I, I think basically the cycling is uh, the, the 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 way R does the uh, cycling seems to be very clear. Yeah. So it's like saying that this recycling rule also applies to logical comparisons. Oh, I didn't know that. It's Which the, one? It checks. It checks like if it, like filter is by the months, then it checks if the months is equal to the two of them. Yes. The combined. Yeah. Yes. So you use um, like mapping, like yes, exactly. I um, use it quite often. Even today, I use this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pretty useful, I think. I, I I don't I didn't think I, I didn't see this in Python at all. Uh, this kind of mapping to, but it could be it could done, but not that that easily. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's it's saying that you know uh, even though it doesn't generate an error, but it doesn't do basically what we want it to do. Oh, so yeah, yeah. So it's like uh, it's not doing what we want want it to do. Because for, for example, take this code, which uh, attempts to find all flights in January and February. Instead, it's not it's not actually doing that. Mm. Because of the recycling rule, it finds flights in odd numbered rows that uh, departed in January and and flights in even numbered rows that, that departed in, in, in February. And, 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 and unfortunately, there is no warning because flights has an even number of rows. So uh, basically, it's not doing what we actually want it to do. Oh, yeah. So I, I think he's just trying to see, tell us that, you know, this recycling, sometimes it might work against you. And Yeah, I think it's uh, uh, it would be useful if this one is working. Like, I would say if, if, our, if, if our developer or core our developers are working on this, it will be very useful because um, you 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 combining a lot of stuff, like a lot of logical vectors, like we talked about before, in yeah. the same in just one expression. So it's yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be yeah, would be very useful. Yeah. So now we look at the uh, the minimum and the maximum some arithmetic uh, functions work with uh, pairs of variables. Two closely related functions are the, the p min and the p max. What is p so, min? I think this is new, right? p min and p max, I don't know them. Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing this for the first time. Okay, what are they doing? Mm, so it, it's like, this is different. This this mean and this p min and p max is different from the, the mean max we see in the summary okay. uh, function. So uh, 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 basically, the yeah, like, like we have this uh, triple, we have x and y, and then we use mutate like the p mean of x and y, and the p max. So basically, they give us the for for each row, for each row they give us the minimum and the max. Nice, nice. Yeah, so basically that's what they for each row. Yeah. Ahmad, did you see what what this does, Ahmad? Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Python like this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we don't. Yeah, but I think Python should have something like this. Oh, huh? we don't. I think we don't. Uh, but you could have the same. I think we could. We could do it with, uh, with pandas, but I, but yeah. not like with a function that's doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. This this looks quite handy. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. 
Yeah. So he's like explaining that this is different from what the mean max does from the summary function, which just gives you the general mean and the general max. Like this. Yeah, look at uh, the modular arithmetic. Yeah, modular arithmetic is a technique name for uh, the technical name for the type of math you did uh, before, like the division. So uh, in R, this is the those integer divisions, and this gives us so sort of this gives us the actual value, and that uh, this other one gives us the 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 remainder, like uh, here. Um, the the actual values, and these are the the remainders we get. If we make the, the this uh, division, so this could also be quite uh, useful for the the the, the flight data, uh, because we can use it to unpack the the scheduled departure time variable into hours and and minutes, which might be very uh, helpful. Like this. So this gives us the R and this gives us the minute. Then it's uh, like this. Instead of just having this, this might not be, you, you know, you could look at this, but you were like, what are, what are these guys writing? But like this, it makes it very readable. And we could also use the mean is uh, any uh, function. We see the uh, the, the yeah, proportion. it's, a, it's a from previous chapter the chapters that I yeah uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah yeah the same yeah see the proportion I, mainly the proportion part is like we use proportion every in every analysis so the main like two steps that you should do if you want to to have the proportion is just the first one is having like a, a logical vector which is like a uh, condition, and oh, yeah. then based on the condition, we you use the summarize plus the group by, of course, uh, to have to apply an aggregation function onto this con condition. Uh, and by taking the mean, you 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 internally you're just getting um, uh, the sum the sum of the values uh, divided by the sum of the all of all uh, um like all the um, all the values itself yeah um so it's just getting the mean uh and mean called proportion but when when you hear he he specifically say that um the proportion based on the some logic you if you have the logic you can get the proportion and uh we use this all, very often so yeah it's very interesting yeah, the proportion seems uh, quite uh, useful. You know, it, it even helps you with the the visualization of the data, and you could see. Yeah, exactly. And you could uh, have some percentage uh, describing some like categorical stuff uh, in every data set. So yeah. Yeah, and and we could see from this uh, visualization that the cancellations uh, seem to accumulate the course of the uh, uh, of the day until like eight p.m. Like uh, very late flights are much less likely to be to be cancelled something like this yeah so it it, it also gives a, a basic overview of uh, log like functions for logarithm which are quite uh, useful especially if you're making a transformation you want to convert your data from one um, level to to another yeah, I think I think they they are using them to normalize the data because some data some data sets are not normalized. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. You you take the log. Yeah, sometimes yeah to 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 normalize this. And this, I I see this very often in financial analysis stuff. Where yeah, especially when you are doing stationary, you want to check for stationary stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, this is like a pre-processing step before you work on the uh, on the data itself. So yeah, yeah. 
uh, also rounding rounding off i think you you mentioned something like that in a previous chapter as well yeah 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 so it's like we can use the round function to to do this which like uh, when we just round it rounds it um up like that but we could still specify be, be more specific like this rounds round just rounds it to the nearest integer but we could uh, still add some uh, we could decide the number of integer we want, uh, the number of decimal places we want, we could uh, determine all that by using the digits. Like if we have round um, X and digits, uh, it will round to the nearest uh, uh, digits is equals to two, will round to the nearest two digit and so forth. Yeah, I, uh, in, the, in the last chapter, I talked about the near yeah. function. So the, the near, near mm -hmm. function is part of the, the plier uh, itself one of the player functions but round i think it's in r itself so i think we, uh, I, maybe i use round better than uh um the near function because it's dependent on the deployer and when we use a function that really often we use them we tend to have like uh preference for the r stuff more than yeah. other packages uh are added into r so yeah, yeah. I, would, I would use round over near uh just just to know awesome. you guys one uh, weird thing about round if it's uh between like uh two like two uh integers it it rounds it to the 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 even one it rounds it to the even integer like here it's between 1.5 and 2.5 so it just rounds it to two so if it's between 2.5 and 3.5, it, it still rounds it to two. So it's like it rounds it, in, in cases like this, it rounds it to the, the, the nearest, uh, the even integer. The even, I, I don't get it, like. Um, yeah. So I think if it's- This is a weird, weird thing that the round uh, function does. Like uh, it gives an example, what's known as round half to even sort of, or bankers rounding. Like if uh, a number is halfway between two integers, it will be rounded to the even integer. Basically, that's why. But uh, this these are two numbers, not not just not one number between two two integer, right? Yeah, two numbers. Yeah. So half is the way I don't I don't get it. But um, I see how, like logically, if we, if it if it's one point five, it uh, it will round it to two. If, yeah. if if it's one point four, okay, so it's rounded to one, I think. If it's what? Sorry, um, is, oh. is rounding like? Um, is it like getting the nearest from? No, look at what they said. Uses what is known as run half to even. Yeah. So they are considering about even. So if a number is halfway between two integers, mm -hmm. it will be rounded to even integer. So yeah. one point five is between one and two. Um, it's halfway, so it will be rounded to even, which is two. Yeah, two yeah, that's what I talk about. It's like one point four, one point five, one point six, one point eight. All those are coming into two, right? No, 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 no. One point five will come to no. like four. One four will be one. One point four will be one. Yeah, that's yeah. One point four will be one because it's not, it is not halfway between yeah. two. Yeah, 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 I got you. Uh, I, I'm saying 1.5 or 1.6 or 1.8, yes, not yes. 1.4. Yes. 1.4, it will become one. Yeah, exactly, uh, but, exactly. But yeah, it, uh, I think I see it logical. It's not like we're saying it's because uh, it's like around, it's, it's like we are, uh, estimating or getting the nearest part for uh, in mathematics so it's uh, just mis mathematic uh, function so yeah 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 we can continue so yeah so we could use the floor and also the uh paired, we could uh, use the, the the floor and the ceiling um functions as well the like the floor will um it, it rounds it to the nearest integer 
um, on the ceiling to so i think here he giving a context uh, the floor function is basically doing um just lowering down the the value yeah in, toward the previous number the previous integer yeah so, uh yeah and uh, opposite is ceiling which is Ceiling floor is uh, like uh, below, below us. We uh, we are uh, working on the floor. So the ceiling is uh, like up above us. So that's very semantic, uh, very semantic, uh, scientific, uh, like what it's called, syntactic sugar, something like that. Yeah. So to just influence us to our, or make it uh, easier for us to understand uh, what it's doing. Yeah. Yeah, and it mentioned some other um, um, uh, sort of roundings we could do. And then it also mentions uh, cutting numbers into like ranges. So we could use like the cut function to do this, to break uh, up uh, AKA bin, uh, a numeric vector into discrete uh, buckets. Yeah, like- Yeah, bins, like yeah. creating bins for our graph. Well, yeah, so, so yeah yeah so could see the example quite uh looks uh, quite straightforward yeah yep yeah and it's like saying that they don't necessarily need to be evenly spaced you could decide to space it depending on the types you have at hand And, and in, in, in this context, you could also supply your own labels as you, as you wish. And how it uh, works with uh, mutate also, how it works with uh, NS. Like, if if the, the the value is not specified in the uh, in the bracket, it uh, sort of usually treats it as a as an any something like this. Like that is what is explained uh, here. Uh, cumulative and uh, uh, rolling aggregates. Base R provides. Uh, cum sum uh, and cum product and uh, cum min cum max. Um, so sort of uh, the cum sum gives you the cumulative sum and then the cum product, cumulative product and so on and so forth. Yeah. It uh, looks at some general transformations, um, like the rank, like the, the rank, which is from the, the, the plier function yeah the same as sql like uh, this is inspired by sql so yeah if you're trying to transform like a, um, a query from sql to r you yeah. will you would probably use those function because it's like built on top of uh, like uh in my in mind that to be inspired by sql so yeah So it sort of gives you the the the, the rank of the, the 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 vector it from the minimum to from the minimum like to the max. So like uh, the, the 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 this function sort of changes the 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 ordering of the minimum instead of it being from the minimum it starts from the max to the minimum. Yeah, and this row number function also, it's uh, uh, quite interesting. 
Yeah, that's also is useful. I use yeah, it. very useful. Very, very, you know, you <laughs> just have to call it without any argument and then yeah. it will do the, the, the stuff for you. Very useful function. Yeah. Based on SQL also, so it's... Yeah. This is exists in SQL, by the way, so... Like this uh, uh, type of function? The row number function is exists in SQL, so... Yeah. It, uh, the offsets, uh, uh, deploy lead and deploy lag, allows you to prefer the values just before. Yeah, so the lag, you prefer the values just before and the lead, the values just after. So uh, here it's any because there was no value before two. So two has no lag and the lag of five is two, two and, and like that. And the lead is the, the reverse, yeah. Yeah, this could also be useful, especially, I think if you are working with time series, you might be interested in the lags. Exactly. Uh, I, I think I, I would use it in time series analysis. Yeah. Yeah, normally, but, but, but some, I think some uh, time series packages might uh, have some functions that will be doing this stuff automatically. Yeah, could be, yeah. No. Uh, consecutive identifiers. Like uh, you, um, sometimes you want to start a, a new group every time some events occur. For example, when you are looking at a website data, it's common to want to break up events into uh, sessions where you begin a new session after gap of more than x minutes yeah example imagine you have the time when people visit the website like this and you have uh, computed the time between each event and figured out if there is a gap that uh, that's big enough yeah so like sort of this uh, helps you if you want to like here you can see we are using the lag uh function in to get the time difference and if it's uh if the the if the gap is uh, like uh, greater than five we like uh play create a logical vector yeah yeah based yeah. on yeah. that condition like yeah. it's like more than five hours or something like this interval. Yeah, and could be uh, detecting anomalies by this also. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, a lot of stuff, but I think uh, uh, some of these things. Like the numerics uh, uh, summaries, uh, just using count means and sums that we have introduced already can get you a long way, but R provides many other useful summary functions. Here are the selection, like the center uh, function. So far we have used the mean to summarize like uh, alternative to that is the like the median as well. So like this uh, examples compares the, the 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 mean and the median. So we can see that the median delay is uh, always smaller than the mean delay because flights sometimes leave multiple hours late, uh, but never leave multiple hours early. Yeah. Also, in the difference of uh, uh, summarizing hourly departures. So, like sometimes it's not always uh, uh, useful to use the the mean. Instead, uh, depending on what we are interested in, the median might even be more informative. Something like this. Yeah, especially if you have like um, a lot of anomalies, uh, outliers, that changes, um, like the dependency 
because meaning the mean affected by um, the outliers, but the median don't, right? Yeah, it, it ex sort of helps us exclude the effects. Yeah. Yeah. And the mode also could be a, a useful one. You might also wonder about the mode or most other common uh, or, or the other most common values. The minimum, the maximum, and the and the the quintile uh, functions. These are all very useful. But I, I think what we have seen today, which uh, it's uh, super useful, is the p min and the p max, which are quite uh, useful as well. The spread, the, the, the spread, sometimes you will not, sometimes we are not so interested in where the bulk of the data lies, but in uh, how it is spread out. So the, 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 yeah, the, quant, the, the quantiles, the standard deviation, and the, I think even the variance, you know, could also help us to, to see the, like, the, the dispersion of the data. Yeah, I think the variance, why the variance is not exist here, because variance have different unit than the main unit of the of the data, but standard deviation in the other side, having the same unit as the data. So uh, that's why we use standard deviation always when we want to uh, uh, show uh, the spread of data. And inter here, interquantile uh, quantile range, I think. Uh, yeah. We use this always when you, we want to uh, specify what is the outlier or like anomaly detection method also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see it, you could see it in uh, the box plot. This is how we, ha this is the box plot by by graph. If you use box, box plot, we'll, uh, we'll see the outlier also. It, it just apply the interquantile range function uh, behind the scene. At least that's what I think it's doing. Yeah. 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 So here, here also it's uh, looking at the like trying to plot the distribution and see how it uh, it behaves. Like figure 14.3 shows the overall distribution of departure delays. The distribution is skewed, uh, it uh, is so skewed uh, that we have to zoom in to see the bulk of the data. This suggests that uh, the, the mean is unlikely. Oh yeah, we have mentioned something like this previously. Instead, the median will be of a better, uh, measure to use. Yeah, uh, basically I think uh, these are the most- uh... Yeah, there is, can you scroll off? Yeah. yeah uh, uh, these positions, there's one. Um... Mm -hmm. uh, this one also, um, yeah. first, last, and end. Yeah. So what they do is they extract values at particular locations. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's quite useful, yeah. That's quite useful. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I use, I use this first one uh, a lot. Uh, to give the first values and i think it's very like uh, depending on the use case but uh, if you want like specify the position you will need this for those functions yeah yeah it seems like all these things don't they don't work uh work well with any so we have to always remove the any yeah Yeah, that's it. I okay. It was um, really good. I learned a lot from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you very much. So yeah.
Um, so I guess you you still stick to the 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 the, the sign of yes. seed or yes exactly. <laughs> so yes. if we if we stick to that, then um, next week is it will be you right in in that case. Or who is that? Is it Mila Miche? Yeah, it was like the the string was you. Let's see. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I will do the string next week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, Abdul. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, we we'll see you next week, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Thanks. Okay. See you next week. Yeah. See you. See you. See you. Bye, guys. Yeah. Bye.